Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at iterating over arrays in Kotlin. In other words, looping over arrays and doing something with each of the elements in the array. Here I've got an array of strings, which I've called months, and I've just put three months in there just to demonstrate the principle here. So if you're following this course in order and you don't have previous programming experience, let me show you the way that you might have come up with. So we'll use a for loop here and we'll have a variable i. And by the way, you can declare the type of this variable right here if you want to. It's just that it's optional. And we'll say for i in, and then we need a range. So let's start at zero because arrays start indexing at zero. Jan here is at position zero. And then we'll go up to and including two because March is at position two. And then we can do something with each of the elements in the array in turn. For example, we could access it and print it out. So let's say months, square brackets, and i. And we don't actually need this type declaration. I just put it in to show you. So this will actually work. If I run it, it's going to basically iterate over that array. We're going to access each of the items in that array. So here we go, Jan Feb Mar. Now, one of the key problems with this is that, in essence, we've repeated a number in our program and it's always best to avoid repeating numbers. The number that we've repeated is the end point of this array. We've got two there. And the reason for that is we've got three items in the array. So if I add or remove items from this array by just editing my code, this loop will no longer work and may even crash the program if we go off the end of the array. So this is not a good idea. What we can do is programmatically access the size of the array and use that instead of the endpoint here. So we can use months.size. Now months.size will be three, which is not what we want. There are three elements in the array, but if we try to access months three, that's actually off the end of the array. So what I can do here is change this dot dot operator to dot dot less than, which we already saw in the last video. And now we're going to go from zero up to, but not including three in the array. And this works as before, but the advantage is that if I add or remove elements now, this is still going to work. Now, what actually is this size? Notice there are no round brackets after size because it's not a method call. In Kotlin, everything is basically an object and an object is a thing that has data and functions, which we call methods, associated with it. So in this case, we're not accessing a method or function of the month's object. We're accessing a bit of data associated with it. And that's why there aren't open and close round brackets after size. However, although this works perfectly well, it's not the best way of doing this. Let's look at three ways of iterating over an array that represents something of an improvement. And in fact, even the editor is trying to tell me here with some great underlining that this isn't the best way of doing this. So one other way that we could do this is as follows. Let's write four, and I'm gonna have a variable here, which I'll call month. So we've got months with an S. I'm gonna have a variable called month, which is going to be actually of type string. And I could declare that here if I want. Let's say for month in, and now just put the name of the array. So for month in months, because remember this entity after in just has to be some kind of object that supplies what we call an iterator, which is a kind of object that gives us information about how the loop's actually going to work. And arrays actually do supply an iterator. They actually have a method called iterator, which gives us certain information. And that means we can loop over them like this and then we can print out month directly. And if you're familiar with Java or Python or any one of many other programming languages, then you will be familiar with this kind of syntax. And what this is going to do is instead of using a loop counter like I, it's going to set this variable to each of the elements in this array one by one. So we can then access the elements directly, Jan, Feb, Mar. Nevertheless, quite often you do want an index when you iterate over an array. So here's another way that we could do this. We could write for 
And this time we are going to have an index, so I'll call it i, which is the most common name for a loop counter, for i in months. And now we'll access another property of the months array, another bit of data that's associated with the months object called indices. And that will actually give us the indices of the array, which are going to be, in this case, 0, 1, and 2, because it's an array of three elements. And then I can do, as before, print line months square brackets i. So let's just run that. So i is now going to take the values 0, 1, and 2, exactly as it did here. But this syntax, of course, is a lot simpler and nicer than this, because there's less typing involved, apart from anything else and indices will automatically change when you change the array. Sometimes you'd like to get the value in the array and its index at the same time. So there's one more way that I'm going to show you of iterating over arrays here. And the ways that I'm showing you here, they're not all the ways that you can do this in Kotlin by any means. But since the other ways are a little bit more advanced, they involve some syntax that we haven't looked at yet. We're going to save those for later. So another way we can do this is we can write for, again, we're using a for loop. And now I'm going to have open and close round brackets. And in there, I'm going to write index, comma, month. So again, this is actually going to be a declaration of two variables, one called index and one called month. And actually, I could even potentially just shorten this to i because it's going to be a loop counter. And I'm going to write in months dot, and now I'm going to use a method of the months array called with index. And that returns an object which we can iterate over. But that object is going to supply us with both the index and the actual object at that index at the same time. So suppose I, for example, want to print out each of the months with its index. I can now do it like this. Let's have a string here, and I'm going to write $i and then $month. So we're going to create a list of months, and it's going to be a numbered list. And if I run this, now we can see we've printed out on the console a numbered list of months. Of course, usually we call January month one, not month zero. So if I wanted to fix that, I could put curly brackets around this i. And within the curly brackets, that's now code. So I could just add one to it. And now we get a numbered list of months where we start from one. But we're not changing how we access the month actually in the array itself. We're just visually changing what we print on the console like this. So the code we've got now looks like this. If you're new to programming, definitely practice all of these ways of iterating through an array. Make up some arrays yourself. Try iterating over them. See if you can put the code away and type it from memory. See how you get on with that. If you want an exercise, one thing that you ought to be able to do at this stage in the course is you could write a program that asks the user to enter a certain number of integers, for example, three integers, and then adds up those integers and tells the user what they add up to. If you do try to do that and you can't figure it out, don't worry about it. That's not a showstopper. It's just an idea to help you get practicing with arrays if you want. And don't forget that you can always Google things. Most programmers these days are constantly Googling stuff. If you're a programmer and you don't do a specific thing for several months, very often it will just go out of your mind and you end up having to Google it to remember how to do it. The underlying skill doesn't go away, but sometimes the precise syntax does, especially if you're using different languages at work. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.